So luckily the lad had to come back so he can be here to watch us bottle this crap. The only thing is I've, I've a little concerned. I am, well, yes I am a little concerned as to what colour this shit's meant to be. I don't know because I've never made mead before. I mean the last lot was alright to be this beer stuff. Hopefully we keep the beer on the table this episode. That would be really good. <laughs> that, was, that was a hell of a waste, wasn't it? That got me a jolly leg. Anyway, um, so I don't know. So we're going to bottle this off and then hopefully it doesn't explode because I think it's finished fermenting. So I've got me, got me painted beer bottle. This is actually me beer bottle drying rack. So I've got me hot water. I rinse the, rinse the bottles out and give them a clean. And then I've got this cool rack that I made up so they can drip dry. So they're nice and dry and clean. And I'm pretty sure this was an old window that I just nailed some jolly um, well mesh in to make a rack. That idea came because I got a really good mate, a really good mate of mine, and he's a home brewer like mad. And down his old cellar, when he had an old farm, he's moved into town now, but he had this old farm, he had this old cellar. And for his drying rack, he had an old bed. So he had an old wire bed. You probably, if you're young enough, you wouldn't know, but the old beds, they used to have a wire base underneath the mattress. So he'd chuck the mattress down the fire pit and he had the beer bottles all on the bed base. And I thought that was pretty bloody groovy, so it could drip dry. I didn't have enough room for a whole bed down here, so I just made up a little one out of this and it works quite good. Someone out there in mead making land's gonna ride in and say, that shit's not meant to be brown. What the hell are you done? <laughs> it's interesting the amount of experts we have in all this sort of stuff. It's kind of groovy. I don't know how many do we need. I don't know. Oh, golly. I was just thinking, now that we've got ourselves organized and got a clothing range, bloke should have got organized and had a Bush B-Man label for his bottles. That'll be the next thing, won't it? But you know what would be the problem with that idea? You'd have to peel the blooming labels off the bottles in the first place. But that might be just way too much effort. I suppose you could stick it over the top. But anyway, I reckon we're gonna find out whether the stuff's any good before we bother about making a wine label. Here we go. Oh, we better take the airlock off. Oh shit, where's the lids? I had a lid, I had the lid somewhere. Where did they go? Oh, hang on, I'll just get the lids, folks. <laughs> cool. <laughs> I'm not sure. I'm not sure whether I'm getting into Viking League here. <laughs> but we're having fun. The other night I was watching a movie about the Vikings, or not about the Vikings, the Vikings were kind of in it. And they were actually up in, like it was King Arthur the movie, and I don't know how cool their time frames are. But they had the, they had the jolly, um, basically they were controlling the north of England, the Vikings at that, in that particular time. And I thought that was pretty cool. So here I am. I've got a connection to my English relatives. No, I haven't got any English relatives. My wife's English relatives. I got some English friends. Now I've got English customers, which is kind of crazy. <laughs> I've got no idea. I wonder what colour this is meant to be. It's quite dark, isn't it? I reckon we're gonna have to we're gonna have to have a taste though. Put it like that so you can see it. What do you reckon? Shall we have a taste? I'll try not to do what I did the other time. I don't have too much. We'll just hold it up to the light. Yeah, it clings to the glass nicely. It's rather thick and oh, it has a sort of it has a honey taste. Hmm, funny that. <laughs> one of our wine labels that we've got here. Give you a big story about how cool it is. <laughs> what does it say here? It says, it says, blind bush be man can't read that without his glasses. That's what that says. <laughs> well, I'm sure it says, lovely fruity notes, smells of heather from the hills. Where are we on the left? Talking about stupid shit like that. I was at the Epicurean Club. Epicureans? Epicure it's a bit like the beef and red wine club or the beef and burgundy boys or anyway these guys are a bit more upmarket so they were epicureans whatever that means google that crap up and find out what an epicurean is but anyway they could tell you what side of the hill the wine was growing on now how cool was that i reckon it'd be interesting to know what part of the box this honey came out of wouldn't it wouldn't that be something different 
Imagine that at the wine tasting or the mead tasting. Oh, I think this was collected on the sunny side of the rose bush. Such light floral hints. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> I mean, honestly. Ah! Stop it. Anyway, it's all good. At least the, at least the lids are interchangeable. Oh, that'd be a pain, wouldn't it? I wondered about that when I was washing all these bottles and washing the lids. I thought that'd be just dandy, wouldn't it, if they didn't in interact. Shit, I think I've, I think I've wrecked me tap. It's a farm hand. I better not get this new jumper dirty before the wife gets home, I'll be in deep shit. <laughs> They were like, what the hell? Down there with your bloody new clothes on. Good God. Whew. Hell, that looks like a party. Oh shit, you guys are still here, aren't you? <laughs> hey, we should wrap this episode up. Well, before I go and rinse my pot out, I thought I might just have a little relaxation here and wrap this up. I was just thinking, um, you know, it's interesting, the circle of life, isn't it? The other... Oh, well, I don't know. It was a while ago, but not well, not so long ago. Uh, when my best friend's father passed away, and I went along to the funeral, and that's you know, well, I was no, I don't know. I hope this isn't going to be a downer for our show, but it's interesting because I was we went along, and you know, they have the nice normal talks and the usual stuff that happens at funerals. I mean, they're always slightly different, but at the end of the funeral, they were basically when they were taken my mate's dad to the hearse they had this really cool song I'd never heard this song before I it was um what was it called it was I'm gonna say it in their dialect but it was on Lockley Moor without bat which was basically on Lockley Moor without hat and I had never heard this and I mean my um family my, my mate's family was from Yorkshire and I think this is the Yorkshire national anthem for what I can gather and it's really cool because it's the whole song is about this dude. He's on Lockley Moor with his girlfriend. I'm not sure whether he's up to mischief. Like, because there's a few versions. You should go on, on the internet and check their songs out. It's kind of cool. <laughs> there's a few versions of it. Anyway, he's on Lockley Moor without his hat, and his mates are telling him you're gonna you're gonna die out there without your hat because that bloody cold. So he goes out there, and then he does pass away and dies. And so they bury him on the moor, and it's. So Lockley Moor, we buried you on the, on the moor. And I'm gonna do it, I'm, as I've stated before on this show, I am the worst, world's worst singer. I mean, when I was in Sunday school, the school teacher used to tell me that I had to mime. And then when I sucked at miming, she said you had to go up the top of the blooming balcony and hold the light, hold the blooming words up. That was my job, that's how good a singer I am. So I'm not gonna sing it. But the men, mainly the men, well the ladies would have been too, but the men that were singing, on Lockley Moor without their hat, or Lockley Moor without bat. They were singing it with such gusto, it was awesome. And I'm like going, I was just taken away with it. It was really cool. Anyway, sorry, I digress. He passes away, they bury him on the moor, and then long come some worms and dig him up, or eat him up. They ate the worms come and ate you. Yeah, I think it goes. The worms come and ate you on, on, on the night. And then along come some ducks and ate up the worms, which is fairly logical. And then along comes us and ate up the ducks. So obviously they went out to duck shoot and ate the ducks. And then the end of the deal is, so now you're in us. And I thought, what a circle of life. How cool is that? Anyway, I shout out to the Yorkshire folk. I reckon you had that shit down. So I hope my good mate knows that I know, I'm, thinking, I'm thinking of him and his dad and his mum and his family and all of that crap that goes on. But yeah, we're all in a circle of life, aren't we? So. Food for worms, I guess, is that the saying? <laughs>